She's the world's only surviving seagoing paddle steamer. At a mere 47, Waverley isn't that old, but with her steam-driven engines and paddle wheel propulsion, she's an attractive old lady with a lot of gentle style that's rare nowadays. She was built in Glasgow in 1947 as a Clyde and Scottish Island steamer to replace an earlier namesake lost in enemy action at Dunkirk and in her heyday served the railway companies ferrying tourists and locals around the Firth of Clyde. In 1974 her regular work on Scotland's west coast was over and her owners decided she must go. But the Waverley by then was something of a rarity, one of a few remaining ships from the age of the paddle. And there were those who just couldn't bear to see her go to the scrapyard. And so, with the help of a generous donation, the Waverley was bought by the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society for just one pound. And she's been operated by the society ever since. Thousands of leisure passengers come back time and time again to revel in the atmosphere of those days gone by, when Britain's holiday makers took boat trips to and from the many bustling resorts around Britain's coastline. During the autumn each year, Waverley operates a series of cruises from ports and resorts in the Thames estuary, Margate, Clacton, South End, the Medway Towns and upriver to the Pool of London. The popularity of her visits to South End are without question, and the pier trains are kept busy bringing passengers down the pier to go aboard for one of the cruises, or just to watch what used to be a common sight at the pier, but is nowadays a rare and somewhat special occasion. As passengers board Waverley at the pier, the scene in the 90s is much as it was in the 20s and 30s, when paddle travel was the norm. Back to 1994, Waverley leaves South End's distinctive skyline behind and heads upriver towards London on this very special day. In the Pool of London, Waverley will join a fleet of historic craft to lead a procession commemorating the start of Maritime Heritage, an organisation being set up to celebrate and support historic craft and memories of Britain's maritime past. In those 47 years since Waverley's keel was laid, the banks of London's river have seen dramatic change. And today's cruise offers a wonderful opportunity to see just how much the riverside scene has been changed since the war. Down below, the engines are an attraction for the passengers who can marvel at the solid engineering which gives Waverley a sprightly performance of up to 17 knots. As the river narrows, the huge developments of the petrol refineries of Canvey Island reflect the energy-hungry lifestyle of the 90s. And soon after, the docks at Tilbury are a reminder that this is still a working river even if it's not at all as it used to be. Rounding one of the many twists and turns of the river, the towers of the Queen Elizabeth II bridge come into view. As Waverley's funnels glide under the bridge, you can't help but think about the many ugly hours you've spent in traffic jams on the M25 up there waiting to make this dramatic crossing. It's also fun to think that far below Waverley's keel is the Dartford Tunnel with its continuous flow of buzzing traffic.
The free ferry at Woolwich has for decades plied across the river here as a service to the people of the East End of London. But as the capital draws closer, the skyline is so dramatically different from the way it was when Waverley was launched. As the Thames barrier comes into view, it stands out like a series of helmets of suits of armour, ready to snap shut in the event of a flood tide. Without it, a tide like the one in 1953, which flooded so much of the East Coast, would be disastrous for the new developments of London's Docklands. In the floods of 1953, a tidal surge was caused by bad weather in the North Sea, coinciding with a spring tide. The barriers closed only a couple of times a year when it's thought that London might be at risk. The river makes a giant loop here to form the Isle of Dogs. One minute you're steaming westwards, then southeast, and soon due north. This curling sideways S confused many of the passengers aboard Waverley, some of whom thought that there were two Canary Wharf towers. It's true that from the river you appear to pass it twice. Now that'd be a shock for the developers and financiers who've had enough trouble surviving with just one. Along the banks, the new housing developments are a stark reminder of the changing face of the river. From the grime of heavily industrialised docklands to luxury residential areas and tourist attractions in less than a quarter of a century. As Waverley passes whopping steps and into the Pool of London, an atmosphere of excitement ripples through the ship. With a couple of blasts of the ship's siren, that special moment has arrived. Tower Bridge starts to open, and around Waverley, a host of historic craft start to raise sail, make steam, or prepare whatever the chosen method of propulsion might be. For most of us on board, it was an exciting moment when those thousand ton roadway sections lift and you glide through the bridge, feeling just a bit satisfied that you have, just for a few minutes, stopped the flow of London's traffic. Waverley moored at Tower Pier for the Maritime Heritage Flotilla to form up. On board came VIPs and journalists with TV crews to cover what would be a spectacular sight when more than a dozen historic craft would sail downstream led by Waverley. The scene here was reminiscent of one which happened so regularly in the early part of the century when the Thames paddle steamer was a common sight, plying between London and the coastal resorts. Seventy years on from these scenes, the age of steam is being celebrated again, albeit by a ship from another river, but it was a spectacular sight nonetheless. With Tower Bridge lifted again, Waverley slid quietly through to take the lead in the flotilla. Formed up behind us was a stately procession with a steam tug, several east coast barges, a fireboat, a canal boat, sailing craft and fishing smacks, all there to enhance the magnificent site and to increase public awareness of the need to preserve the nation's maritime heritage for all to enjoy.